I may need to export a few things from my life. Hey Pinnacle Studio peeps, how y'all doing out there? My name is Malik and I'm back on your screen with more Pinnacle Studio love from PinnacleStudioPro.com. Today we're going to be doing a video on exporting in Pinnacle Studio 21 Ultimate. Let me know in the comment section below what presets you use and what file formats you like to export to. Let's jump into the software and make it happen. Here we are in Pinnacle Studio 21 Ultimate. Before we get started, I want to remind you to subscribe to Pinnacle Studio Pro to see great tips and tricks just like this every Saturday. Now, I just made an export tutorial about three months ago, but this is my workflow tutorial. So I'm going to break down my workflow and the options that I choose, but I'm also going to give you a quick little bonus. I'm going to tell you about each of the file formats and what they should be used for. All right. I'm going to stick to those things, run through this and get you back to what you need to be doing, which is making great content. So let's make it happen and let's get to exporting, shall we? You can see that I'm on the export tab and here I am under the file section. I'm going to stay under the file section for this entire video because I don't make disc. Okay. You may make them. I don't, this is my workflow. I'm staying away from that stuff. All right. So the first thing that you want to do here is choose a destination to save your file. So you click on this little file destination icon here. It'll open up the file explorer and then you can choose your lovely location to place your video. I'm going to hit cancel on this. You want to give it a file name, name your video, whatever you want to name it. Trip to grandma's day at the beach, uh, Malik's big mouth, whatever you want to call it, give it a name and then move on from there. Now, the next thing that you want to do is you want to choose your export actions. So what do you want it to do after you're done? Do you want it to sound an alarm? Do you want to shut down your PC? Do you want to open up a windows Explorer? Or do you want to add the exported file to the library in Pinnacle Studio 21? I choose to open in uh, Windows Explorer so that I can look at the file and make sure that everything went okay. I do that after I make every video. I always look at the entire video. Yes, I know you just spent hours editing, but it makes sense to do it right then and there because if there is a mistake, you can go back in and fix it. So I always open in the Windows Explorer and that's the option that I choose. So the next option you have here is same as timeline. If you select same as timeline, then it's going to use your timeline settings to create the format preset and thing that you need for your video. I'm not going to select that because I'm in teach mode. I'm in full blown teach mode. And it's time for me to talk to you about the formats. Now there are options here and I talk about these in the export tutorial. There's format extension device and web. So web, I'm going to start off there. I don't use web either because guess what? I just don't. I just create files and then I go directly to the sites and I upload on those sites. You have device under here. There's a million and one devices you can choose from maybe a million and two, something like that. Uh, and then after that I have extension. So the extension is really the wrapper and not the wrapper like Jay Z. It's the wrapper of the file format. So what's it contained in? And so you usually have your file extension like MOV or MP4. I'm not going to go in depth into what a wrapper is. Just know that if you select one of these, guess what? The file formats that are available for that wrapper will be listed here. And since I can easily see all of the file formats and talk about them by going here, that's what I'm going to do today. So I'm going to select format. And then I'm going to talk to you a little bit about each one of these formats. So the first one is H.264. Now this is one of the most common video codecs in use today. This codec is widely supported and used by many different video formats. So H.264 is a very efficient compression and it delivers great video quality, even though it is compressed. Now, if you want to create HD or 
higher resolution content for uh, Blu-ray disc or online videos uh, and you want to have a smaller file size, this is a very reliable option for you. Now the next option that we have on here is MPEG-4. So MPEG-4 is a versatile format that supports a wide range of codecs. So it has a small file size and that directly translates to a lower bandwidth and that makes it great for live streams. So it's used a lot for delivering video content over the internet and it's a favorite choice for people um, who are watching things on smartphones or other portable devices. Then we got QuickTime. So QuickTime is a file format that was created by Apple. Great company. I got a lot of Apple devices, even though, you know, I love to get down on my Windows PC with Pinnacle Studio. QuickTime files use multiple codecs, right? So because of that, there are very few compatibility issues with QuickTime files. So QuickTime files are used for a lot of different things. They're used on the Apple platform. They can even be watched on a Windows PC as long as you have the right type of player or viewer. And QuickTime files are used a lot for video sharing, uh, looking at uh, videos on Apple devices and also for online videos. Next, we got XAVCS. So XAVCS is a file format found on Sony cameras. Um, one of the more popular ones that it's on is like a Sony A7S. So the file format offers low compression and it's very similar to the quality of ProRes and DNX HD. Exporting to a XAVC file can cause a few compatibility issues. Sometimes people bring those files in and they're like, hey, my files won't play or whatever. If you want to broadcast some 4K footage on your TV or your projector and it can handle those uh, XAVCS files, then this will be a great choice. Next, we got Transport Stream. Now, Transport Stream was originally created for broadcast TV, but it's more widely used now for camcorders, DSLRs, and mirrorless cameras. So whenever you record footage on a lot of those different cameras, they create MTS files like Canon is well known for having those types of uh, extensions on their video files. So these are commonly used in uh, the creation of Blu-ray disc. So if you're looking to drop your video onto a Blu-ray later on, then exporting to a transport stream file could be the way to go. Next, we got AVI. If you're looking for a file format with less compression that can be played on most devices and websites, and you don't mind having a standard definition resolution, then AVI is your best bet. It's an older format that doesn't offer higher resolutions and it's not used uh, by a lot of content creators, but it is out there in the ecosphere of the internet. I don't even know what that means. I just made up a word, the ecosphere. If ecosphere is a word, leave the definition in the comments. So it's in, it's out there on the web, darn it. All right, AVI files are out there in crazy mass quantities. So you know that if you create an AVI file, you know that it's gonna be compatible on a lot of different players out there. Next, we got MPEG-2. So if you want to create a DVD, MPEG-2 is the file format for you. So the low compression rate of the file format creates high quality images, but it results in a larger file size than some of the other formats that we've mentioned. So if you don't mind spending more time exporting your video and you aren't concerned about hard drive space, then MPEG-2 is the best option for you. MPEG-1, that's the granddaddy, or even a great granddaddy of the MPEG file formats. Now, people don't export to this file format that much today because of its lower quality, but because it's been around so long, it's one of the most widely compatible 
video format in the world. Yes, in the world. So if you don't mind the lower quality and you want to make sure that your video will be compatible wherever you play it, then MPEG-1 is probably worth the shot. Next, we got DivX, and this is a digital video compression format based on MP4. The DivX format is notable because of its ability to compress lengthy videos into small sizes while maintaining some pretty good quality. Uh, DivX files can be downloaded over high-speed internet in a short period of time without sacrificing that quality of the digital video. So if you're looking to do file transfers of videos and you're putting them out there online somewhere for people to be able to grab them, uh, download them, this is a good option. Next we got DivX HD and it's pretty much for the same usage like putting online and to let people grab those videos but it's different because DivX HD is 1080p and DivX is usually 720p. Also, DivX HD supports six channel 5.1 surround sound, all right? Now, the DivX HD format is great for viewing things on your HD TV because it's full HD, and it's also great for viewing things on your PC if you got an HD display. Next, we got Windows Media. So this was created by Microsoft and it was a replacement for AVI. So the size of the WMV file makes them a popular format for streaming video over the internet. Also, because the format is owned by Microsoft, if you're looking to play a video on an older version of PowerPoint, then WMV or Windows Media file is one of the few formats that is going to be supported on those older versions of Office. If you're looking to play your video on a wide variety of devices, WMV may not be the best bet, but if you're sticking to Windows and you're playing videos online, then WMV should be something you can go to. Flash videos can be played via the Adobe Flash Player via web browser plugins or one of several third-party programs. Since virtually everyone has one of those things installed on their PC or on their browser, it's one of the most common online video viewing platforms used on the web. And the last video option that we have on here is 3GPP. So 3GPP is the required standard format for media files sent using multimedia messaging service or via MMS text. This file format saves on disk space, bandwidth, and data usage, which is why this file format is best for storing, viewing, and transferring between mobile devices. So that's all of those formats broken down for you. So I choose H.264 AVC. Now, the reason why I select this one is just like I said in the video, because it's widely supported. Uh, compression is very good and the quality is high. Now, that is my preference. And I put these videos online on YouTube and share them on files with people. They do a great job for me in what I do. Now, you might choose a different file format based on what I discussed earlier. For the preset, I usually choose custom. And then what I do is I select my size and the size that I use is 1920 by 1080. I use the progressive interlacing and I select 24 frames per second, uh, peak bit rate. You can go ahead and change this to the bit rate that is suitable for you. You're going to get higher quality with the higher bit rate, but it's also going to make your file size larger. I just go with the 12. And then you have your audio sample rate, channels, whether you're going to do mono or stereo in this case, because of the format that I selected, the sample rate and the bit rate you can adjust these based on your sound preferences. Uh, you can always do a search online for like 
the best sample size, uh, sample rate, and things like that for your video. And in here under advanced, you have always re-encode entire movie. This option forces your movie to be completely re-rendered for output. And then you have pre-processing. So this is pre-processing of your render files. Uh, helps to lower the use of your memory. And you have choices for automatic render completely before export or no pre-processing. And then when you're done, hit start export and you're good to go. I hope the explanation of those file formats helped you make a decision on how you want to export your next movie. But for me, I'm all about that H.264, baby. All right, Pinnacle Studio peeps. I want to thank you so much for watching this video all the way through to the end. It truly means the world to me. And now I want to send a shout out to one of my subscribers, Kid Perfectionist. Kid Perfectionist makes trick shot videos and videos that encourage kids to get outside and play. So if you want to see some really, really dope trick shots, or if you want to encourage your little ones to get outside and rustle around and do things instead of sitting in the house on their iPads, iPhones all day long, head on over to Kid Perfectionist's channel, check out a couple of their videos, and if you're feeling what they're dealing, make sure that you subscribe. If you guys want to get a shout out like Kid Perfectionist did, head over to our video description and fill out our shout out request form. If you have a tutorial you'd like us to make, head over to the video description and fill out our tutorial request form. Now that I'm done with that, I got a few things I need you to do for me. The thumb. The one that's pointed in the upward direction, click on it. It lets people know that the content in this video is good and that they should watch it too. If you got any comments, questions, you just want to talk or chop it up with your boy, leave those things in the comment section below. And last but not least, smash that subscribe button. And after you do that, click on the bell. When you do, you receive notifications every time I upload content to YouTube, and that way you don't miss out on any of the learning and all of the fun. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.